What's going on? So I'm going to show you how you can animate and rig your very own low poly character in Blender just like this. So let's get started. So here I am in Blender version 3.2.2 and this is a follow up, a part two. If you want to see how I actually created this character from scratch, go ahead and check out the video in the description below on how I modeled a low poly character. Now. Before we get started, there are a few things we need to do, and if you already have your very own model, then that's okay. All you need to do is just wait for the armature and the rigging, but for now, if you were following from the previous video, basically, we have all these mirror modifiers that we need to apply on our character. So if you have any modifiers, make sure you apply them first before you go ahead and start editing and adding the bones to your character. And then one thing you need to know as well is that double check your model make sure everything is aligned the way you want it to be and then also for the neck I'm apply this here and I noticed that the center point is in, in the spot I want so I can go here to object set the origin and then origin to geometry and I have it right there and then I'm gonna select all of them and I'll hold shift and have the chest plate as the essentially the middle and then I can do is actually command J and this basically joins the mesh into one now, one last thing I want to do before we start adding the bones is that if you go over here to item, you'll notice the location and scale. So if I actually go here and press Command A, I have or Control A if you're on Windows, all transforms, resets the transforms, and then pretty much you're good to go. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, let's go ahead and add a bone. So Shift A, Armature, and right now let me go ahead and let's toggle off X-ray just so you can see better, and we have the bone right here. So if I were to move this GZ up, you'll notice that you can't see it. So what we need to do is actually go over here to this guy, the little running guy, click on the viewport display and click on front view. And then I go G and then Z, I'll put it like right about here. This would be kind of like the, so you can say like the tailbone, but basically like the bottom part of the spine. Zoom in a little bit. And you're probably wondering how many bones should I put? Well, ideally it all depends on your model. So for this example, if I go here and tab, and I'm in edit mode currently right now. So if you see here, basically I have loop cuts that are pretty much right there and then also additional ones up here. But for the sake of it, we're gonna keep this fairly simple. And we're not gonna add too many loop cuts. Or I mean not loop cuts, too many bones. So we're just gonna add one right there. And let me just go ahead and press E, Z extrude it. I make this one a rather large, so like one right here, easy again. And then obviously if you want yours to make uh, you know much more of a spine and bend then you'll have to add obviously add more but for this uh, sake we'll keep it like this easy add for the neck and then easy add for a head if your character has a head you can add there and then right here this will be I think is a clavicle no exact uh, uh, name but basically like the collarbone area and then we'll go E we shoot it out till about right here and then I'll go E again and then if I do shift Z, I can actually see where I have my loop cuts in wireframe mode. So let me go ahead and press one to see the front face view. So right about there, I like that spot. Same here, right here on the wrist. Then E again right there. Now if I press three, you'll notice that if I go shift Z again, our arm, it's like not perfect. So what we need to do is a click, we're still in mode by the way, G, bring it back. All right, I like that positioning here. Same thing here, G, bring it back a little bit, and like this. So now we can confirm everything by going and viewing around your character. And let's see, and I'm on the laptop, but also if you have the mouse, the little mini, the mini scroll wheel in the middle, if you click and hold and drag, that's how you can see the view like that. And then now, what we can do is we can go to this hip area right here. And again, you could add a hip bone, so which I'll do right here. And then I'll add, the first part of the leg and then E again the extrude I'll go down here to the second parts and then this will be essentially a foot now you can add like toes and stuff too but we'll keep it very simple and again let's move this stuff so G right here let me make sure I click on this option G let's see a G there G move it right about here and then G click on this top view right there and let's see, phone wise, yeah, I'll probably move it back a little bit. But for the most part, that's what we got so far. And now what we wanna do is let's start naming these bones. So we're here on this option right here, the bone properties. I'll just call this, uh, basically, let's just say, you know, 
bottom right there this can just be like you know let's call it spine and then it could be like upper spine right here these don't really matter too much because these are essentially in the middle so this won't be like the neck bone and head what's important though is the ones like the arms so like this this one's not too important because we're not going to mess with this too much but this part is so i'll just call this like um collar but make sure you, you do whatever you want to name it but then you say dot and then the side so this will be a left side because ideally this guy is facing us so if he's facing us in this this back side view this is essentially his left side arm so go back to your one and then here we have this i'll call this one upper arm dot l you can see there and then here lower arm dot l and then this one will be i just say um yeah hand dot l click here this let's just say uh hip dot l upper leg of this one upper leg dot l this one will be lower leg dot l and then this one will be make sure i click on it this will be i'll just call this like um foot dot l now one thing too we need to do is we're gonna be using inverse kinematics ik for short and essentially because we are basically moving the character down to where he can bend his knees and up and the only way to do that is with ik so right now if we're still in edit mode we can click on this knee joint press e extrude it and then what we need to do is we actually have to do alt p or option p and we got to clear this parent and same thing is we're going to go to the heel press e to extrude click it again option p or alt p depending on your computer clear the parents this one was i'll just say gy to move it out about right about here because when i'm animating if i move the knee up it's gonna like uh move it up quite a bit and then one thing we need to do is we got to name this. So this one's going to be the pole. So we'll go back to three. So this, this new one we have selected is I'll just call it IK, IK underscore pole dot L, which you'll see why in a second. And then the bottom is the target IK underscore target dot L. And it's very important you name it just like this. Cause then when we start uh, adding the properties, you'll see why. So now before we do everything, first of all, let's do this. I want to, one, I want to make sure the roll for all these bones are at zero. So I click on this bone here, I press N. We'll see the roll zero here, roll zero here, roll zeros here, here, zero, zero. This one isn't zero, so we gotta go here to roll and put it at zero right here. There we go. Arm is not at zero, so we'll go zero again. This one is still not zero, go to zero right there. Same thing, make the zero hip, change that to zero. Let's go to upper leg, roll zero. This one, roll zero. Foot, let me change my view, zero. This one, target zero, and this pole, zero. Okay, there we go so far. Now make sure if you haven't, save your file if you don't have already saved, and then, what we can do now is we can go actually let's click into our uh artist here let's go into pose mode and now i'm gonna click this lower leg right here and i'm gonna go over to this now we have this option called a uh, bone constraint so i'll click here at inverse kinematics and then i want to make the targets one is the armature now if you name yours differently then you can obviously pick something else and the bone is going to be, well, this is target. So just type in target, IK, target right there. And then pull, again, we target the armature. And then it should be pull right here. And now you noticed, first of all, the foot is a little twisted. That's okay. But I also want to make sure I set this chain length to two. So I set the chain length to two first because I have it to be connected on the upper bone here. And then if I change this pull, let's try a minus 90. And minus 90 looks like it fits right here. Sometimes you can choose 90 degrees or you can even do um, 180 or minus 180. But now if you were to test this out, I can click on this one and I move it up. And you can see the leg is moving. And let me hit escape. And then if I click on this bone here now, I can see that it's rotating. 
And then one thing I want to check if I click here, and you notice now when we move this, it's just moving by itself, right? So one thing is too, you can actually go to this top option right here by the overlays, and you can click on relationship lines to see exactly where your bones are connected to. And it looks like I have it connected to this bottom foot, which I don't need it to. So let's tab back in edit mode, and we can do Option P or Alt P to clear the parent. And then now if I tab in now and I move it, it's there, but it's not. It doesn't have any relationship lines. And if yours doesn't have any already, then you should be fine. Don't have to worry about that. But then what I want to do is I'm gonna parent it to this hip bone. Now if you don't have hip bone, then you have to parent it to here, but. Basically, you have the uh, middle bottom selected. Shift select this hip bone, since this one's connected already. Then I can do Command P or Control P, and we're gonna do Keep Offset. So now when I tab in at Pose Mode, if I move my character down now, you can see that it's currently moving it down, nothing's happening. But then if I move the hip down, now you can see everything is moving with the character just like this. Now, ideally, you could change this up to where if I Command Z this again, let's click on this hippo now and shift select this one, Command P, make this one keep the offset. Now, if I move the hip, now the hip is in, or not hit the bottom is now in control. And then if I move the hip, it's just like this. So, ideally, it depends on preference, but for this, I like it better if I have the actual um, hip part selected. And then if I go to like, oh, escape. Now if I go to three view, you can see it's like this. And then we can test all our bones again, just to make sure, just to make sure everything is working. Looks like it's moving, going down, up, rotating. Okay, so so far everything looks like it's working how I want it to work. Let's tap back out into edit, and then let's go to uh, object mode. Let's do shift Z, you can see better. So now cooler trick, we have the armature, you can just press, um, just click on the armature, select everything. And then what I want to do is, and also if you don't like the way the foot's in, you can always change that in edit mode too, but I think it's fine for now. You can right click, and then, actually we have to go in edit mode, my bad. Select A in edit mode, then we right click, and now you can see symmetrize. So if you named everything properly, like I said, you right click, boom, symmetrize, in edit mode, check it out now we have our entire rig so now if i were to click these guys and let's go into pose mode now let's check it out so i got movement right here let's see how it does look at that whole entire rig moving just like this let's check this knee joint rotating arms good good head yep 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 okay so now the bone part is pretty much there and all we need to do is simply select our model here's the guy and then shift select the actual bones the aka the armature command p or control p automatic weights and now you notice that our character did get a little um wider based off the bones to fit them but again if you want to make the bones small obviously you can do that too but now let's test this out so if we click on our bones we go into pose mode and I wanna try something. So first off, let's do the easiest, which will be the arms. So let me just press G. Arms are moving here. Arm moves there. Hand moves there. Click here, the head moves. Uh, let's try the body. Body's moving. Let's try this, here's a real test. G, character is bending. And again, depending on the mesh, since this is low poly plus, I create everything in separate pieces. One thing you'll notice is like if you make them bend over like this, like it's separated. Now I'm gonna make a future video again if you're watching this and you followed from part one, where you essentially make a mesh into one whole piece. That way you don't have to worry about this. But again, let's do Alt R and Alt G to re uh, reverse every movement. But for now this is simplicity, uh, super basic um, tutorial. Here let's try out the legs, legs are rotating. And last but not least the feet, so here. So basically now, you're free to move your character around, make them do whatever you want to. And one thing I did notice is, if I go over here, if I shift my character too far off, it's gonna stick its feet into the ground. Click on the actual bone that's the, the foot, uh, the um, target, and then click on deform. And then now, 
when you move your character he is good to go just like that so now for the most part i mean the basic movement and everything is there and let me just do all arnold again move this guy up the feet is moving up now there are still some things that obviously you'd have to refactor or change up based off of the current model just the way i designed this but if you have your own model this is like the basic rig parts and then one thing is like um for example weight painting like for example if you're like hey you don't want this shoulder bone to do anything we can actually go back into object mode and then we click and then we uh shift select the actual mesh and then go to weight paint and then now the way to select the bone is you basically have to hold uh control and left click and now you can see what it's actually doing so now if i were to change this from let's do subtract ideally you want add if you're like trying to make the bone move apart but since i'm i don't want my cosmos to, to do anything in this model i can select subtract and then literally just color over this entire body right here and then that's what i do it like that and then also let me see let's do control let's click on this guy right here you can see he moves most of this stuff here and that's basically the main part of the bodies let's see even here moves there and for the most part let's do here and i'll just do uh, subtract again and you make sure you have the strength and the weight you can update that depending on how powerful but basically the lighter blue is green it's like less strong but then if you have something like red if i hold there if i were to color this with add let me go here to show you and just make it red that means it's very focused and very strong on that area so let me go back now to object click into pose mode so now you watch if i move this bone it doesn't touch the actual um like this part's not moving anymore it's just the arm but ideally again since this mesh is very basic i don't want to go too detail but in a generalized idea of the rig it pretty much you're able to do most basic things you can move your guy around like this but now you're probably wondering how do i animate this well basically let's go here shift uh arrow back what you do is you pick whatever first pose you want you press a to select all the bones you press i and then you set the location uh, location rotation scale so let me see I'm not sure why is it not um should have said it oh i just didn't drag it all okay there you go my bad it was there already so let me delete this second keyframe so this is essentially when you see this orange that means you made the keyframe make sure if you don't see it that means you have to scroll all the way up to make sure you're on the top of the animation and then if you go to like 10 uh frames later also if you want to change let me see where's that right here this option output properties you can change like the length so if i put this to like a uh, hundred then your animation will only be 100 and then it can loop infinitely if you have like a specific thing so let's go here click on my guy's little tailbone here let's move them down and then let's just select a i rotation region scale so now you can see he's moving like this let's do let's see let's go back move him back up like that go like this select a i rotation range scale then move it along I can move my foot up, like, like, let me see, let's go like this, here, turns and go here, and you get the point, it's fairly simple, it's nothing, you know, too crazy, and then also if you want to reset it, you can do Alt R Alt G, same here, you click on the bone that you just selected, Alt R Alt G, and then you can select I again, or A, select all I and the keyframe, that way, like, it moves like this. And then ideally, if I were to put this at like 41 frames, it would pretty much loop this entire animation like this. So my man's doing a little kick dance right here. Super basic. We could actually add in some arm move. And also, if you don't like this frame, you can delete it too. So like, um, here, let's do rotate. Let's do my man's arm like this. And obviously, if you have your own custom mesh, it's going to look a little better with the um, animation. And then... Um, Let's move like this, like that, here, let's do a little head turn, and let's see how this looks. So man, it's just dancing right here, and that's pretty much right here. This is basics on how to rig and animate a low poly character. This dance looks kind of crazy, but you can see what I meant by like the 
the pieces aren't connected because I created everything separate. But I will make future tutorials of much more complex models. But for now, like and subscribe. This video helped you out. Share it with your friends. I'll see you in the next one.